10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. 2, 1, 0. Attention. And lift off. New Shepard cleared the tower. And lift off. Mission control has confirmed New Shepard has cleared the tower and is on its way to space with our fourth human flight crew. Godspeed, New Shepard. Godspeed, the Roaring Twenties. Enjoy this ride. You can see on the lower left-hand side of your screen, we are gaining Team speed 5, as New Shepard lifts off towards space. That beautiful burn on that VE3 engine lifting New Shepard towards space. As we hit T plus 55 seconds, we will enter max Q, the point max where Q. aerodynamic stress on the vehicle is at its maximum. We just confirmed max Q and that BE3 engine doing some work, 8,000 horsepower equivalent of it to produce 110. Thousand pounds of thrust on its way to speed space. We have a beautiful shot of the BE3 engine there and it's colorless exhaust. That's what happens when you mix liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. That is steam powering the rocket all the way up to the top here in 20 seconds. The BE3 will throttle back, shut down and will reach main engine cutoff. Stay tuned. There it is, Miko, way to go, BE3. Thank you for powering our astronauts to space. That was our main engine cutoff. Shortly here, we'll see separation of the crew capsule and the booster. At this point, our Capcom Kevin Sprogue will momentarily cue the astronauts to unbuckle their harnesses and start floating around the capsule. Welcome to Zero Gravity, Gary Lai and crew of the Roaring Twenties. Beautiful shot there of the two separate craft. George Neal, Sharon and Mark Hagel, Jim Kitchen, Marty Allen, and Gary Lai. Welcome to Zero, Zero G. Let's listen in as they float about the crew capsule. First step, blue control. Step, this is your one-minute warning. One-minute warning. One minute warning. One minute warning. 
congratulations to all six crew. They crossed that Carmen line. They just officially became astronauts. Absolutely outstanding. You heard that audio online from Kevin Sprogue, our capsule communicator, telling our crew, I'm sure they're having an amazing time up there, but they have to start getting ready to buckle back in. Shortly here, both the crew capsule and the booster will be descending. That's right, Jackie. Uh, so unofficial numbers, but we saw an apogee of 351,000 feet. So definitely well into the Kármán line, well into space. Congratulations, astronauts. Uh, the rocket is now reaching, sorry, this is the booster portion of New Shepard, is reaching its atmospheric pierce point. It's returning from space. Those control surfaces, those wedge fins, those actuated aft fins are now starting to have a little bit of air resistance to push against. The booster will reach its maximum re-entry velocity, which is just under Mach 4. That's four times the speed of sound. And it's an incredible booster shape coming back down over the West Texas desert against those Texas blue skies. This is the fun part. The wedge fins, the steering fins, the ring fin, all earning their keep at this point, really doing some work to bring that propulsion module over the landing pad. What an incredible sight out there. Here shortly, we'll see the air brakes deploy that will cut the velocity of the booster in half. There it is. This is a critical step in slowing the vehicle down before the BE-3 engine is reignited for the final portion of the descent. We had a sonic boom. Man, was that incredible. I love hearing that sound. And the BE-3 engine relights for the final portion of the descent. New Shepard, welcome back to Earth. What an incredible feat of engineering required to bring this rocket back safely, reuse it. All I can ever say, Jackie, is wow. Wow, Eddie, truly, no matter how many times we've seen this happen, a live booster landing onto that landing pad will take your breath away. And I have to say, Eddie, the char on the side of that New Shepard booster, there's nothing like it. Right above that feather looks like, and we see, of course, the New Shepard propulsion module beginning to dump some of the excess propellants. That's a key step for our reusable booster. We'll vent the tanks, we will inert them. That'll maintain the cleanliness throughout and allow that uh, booster to turn around and fly again. We've got a great shot there of the capsule. There go the Drogue parachutes. They've deployed on our crew capsule to slow it down. And there go those main parachutes. Those three mains will slowly inflate to help slow down the return of the crew capsule. While the parachutes are, of course, essential to provide a gentle touchdown for the crew capsule, New Shepard also has that innovative retro thrust system to make our touchdown even smoother for the Roaring Twenties crew flying today. From the blackness of space to the beautiful West Texas desert, our crew is getting an experience right now. Wow. That was a quick
First step, flu control. Step, Stand, flu by Stand by touchdown. Stand by touchdown. Stand by touchdown. Touchdown. Welcome back to Roaring Twenties and Astronaut Gary Lai. Uh, that sounds like some happy crew members there. Uh, from the sounds of it, maybe y'all landed back safely and are doing great. We'll get confirmation from Mission Control here shortly. What a beautiful shot of that booster and capsule in the West Texas desert for what looks like a wholly successful fourth human flight. That West Texas does kick up there for our crew, welcoming them back to Earth. At this point in the mission, our team is preparing landing safety operations and recovery of our astronauts from the crew capsule. We'll be on the ground at the landing site to follow that action in just a bit. And hopefully, Eddie, hopefully, hopefully, even hopefully. talk to some of the world's newest official astronauts. <laughs> 